Hi guys and gals, this is Brian. Welcome to this tutorial. This tutorial is going to be on lighting in Moho. Uh, we're going to develop some lighting controls. Um, you can use control bones, smart bone dials, the same way you use them for other animations. You can use them to make lighting controls. So one thing that I'd like to do is toward the end of this animation, I'll show you. I have some fire, fire that pops up on this animation and this skull. This is my Halloween animation this year, um, and I'd like to change the way the lighting hits the face, um, and then also change the way the lighting uh, is around these flame sources. So one thing about uh, lighting is, let me, I'll just give you a quick Art 101 here. Lighting is really only seen when it's hitting the object, right? So if there's no object for the light to bounce off of, then there really is no place to change the color and thickness of your light. So obviously there's going to be light that is hitting this skull and then um, imagine that there, there's sort of a room here and so there'll be a little bit of a glow on the back so-called wall of this room. And so I'm going to put a little bit of a glow behind these, these flames and then also make some shapes on the face um, where the lighting is going to be hitting and then the absence of those shapes will be the shadows on the face. So this really is a tutorial about lighting and shadows. So let's get started. The first thing that I want to do, I had initially made a shade on this character's face, I'll show you. And I'm going to use that to make some ambient lighting over this character's face. So my shade was here, as you can see. It was shading half the face. But what I'm going to do instead of this is I'm going to drag this shade and I'm going to make it span the entire face. And the reason for that is uh, it's masked to the face, so it's only going to be seen where the face is um, and the hair and so on and so forth. But uh, now that it's covering the whole face, um, it's going to be shading the entire, the entire face. So if I preview this, there's a little dimness to the face, and that's what I want. Um, but I can make a control bone to control how dim this is going to be. So uh, working with the opacity and the, the color. So that's what I'll do next. So selecting my character's bone layer, you can say I have all these control bones for the facial features. Well, I'm going to start adding control bones for the lighting, and I'll just put those up top. So I'll go to my Add Bone tool, and let's go ahead and add. I'm going to call this Ambient Lighting. And for this control bone, I'm going to attach it to the, uh, the shade. And again, you can just go to your actions and make a new action or select this bone and make it a smart bone dial, which is what I tend to when we change it. <laughs> it looks kind of freaky because of the way it's masked, but that shouldn't be how it uh, renders. So now this is, this is completely dim. And then if we change this, um, all the way bright then he has full lighting it's like the light is hitting him uh, exact uh, with a, a fully bright light it'll start dim and then toward the end of my animation these torches are going to come on and then that's when the lighting is going to change so when those torches come on I'm going to have lighting hitting uh, the edge of, of my artwork here it's definitely going to be hitting the edge and um, uh, maybe just the, the very ends of the face here. Um, and then further in, we will have shadows because the lights are a little bit behind the character and to the side. So the light will hit definitely the sides and then just a little bit on the front. And then we'll have mostly shadows still here in the middle. And that will be controlled by the dimness of that ambient lighting. So the next step is to draw the shapes of the, the, shapes of the lighting um, that actually hit the object. So that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, so I made a new vector layer here. I called it face lighting. It can be in the head layer. It just needs to be not masked. So if we put it inside, just make sure it is on check. The don't mask this layer is checked. So let's go ahead and start drawing our shape. Okay, so let's make a smart bone for 
animating or an action for animating the opacity of this of this lighting and also the color so I might make two because um, we might want the color of the lighting to change um, based on our scene so let's go ahead and do that select my character's bone layer add bone this is going to be we'll call it contact contact lighting opacity there we go. Let's go ahead and make a smart bone dial. Looks good. Let's make a dial for the color. Let's add one more bone. Call this contact lighting color. I used a smart bone dial for the contact lighting color, and I, I changed the color through the through the shape fill. Um, now for the opacity, you can select the same layer and animate the action um, using the layer layer settings and use the opacity and the allow animated layer effects. That's how you can use opacity and uh, lighting color um, on the same layer. So that way it doesn't get too confusing with multiple layers. So that's how it worked. And as you can see, the contact lighting color uh, changes. Uh, with that and then also the opacity can change so if I put that all the way up the opacity can make it uh, fully invisible or fully visible so um, that's what we got going and let's see how it works on the animation so obviously at frame one the the image has not morphed into a skull yet so I want these to be uh, invisible at frame one it's going to be white light I've decided it's not going to be blue light um, so what I would like to do is go ahead and change the opacity to um, oops, so frame one. The color is going to be white, which is all the way down. Opacity is going to be zero, so that's all the way up. Um, I might move those. Let's go back to frame zero. Let's just move these into so they're not. getting in the way here. All right, so there's my lighting controls. All right, so here we go. So at frame one, it is not visible. So let's go ahead and head all the way over to the morphing skull. All right, so the morph starts right about there. Let's just make sure we have it exactly. So the morph starts at frame 523. That's where it starts. So we're going to go ahead and uh, start the lighting changes there as well. So we got our contact lighting, and then we got our ambient lighting uh, as the morph occurs. Here's the end of the morphing. We're going to bring the contact lighting color stays the same. The contact opacity is going to be fully visible. And it doesn't look like much yet because we're also going to change the ambient lighting to become a little bit more dim to provide that contrast. So let's go and do that. Let's see what that looks like. Now it's not on the preview screen, but when you render, there you go. And I think I'll bring the opacity down just a hair because I do want to see through to some of the lines on the skull. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, let's bring it maybe, let's try 50%. Let's see what that looks like. Pretty cool. Like it to be a little bit brighter and we're seeing some of those, some of those. The lighting looks great though. I think that's really cool. Let's bring it a little bit lighter, closer to 75. There we go. Now I'd like it to get to f to get it to flicker uh, with the flames of the torches. So I'm just going to animate that flicker. So starting at right as the morph occurs. So select our morph bone. We can see. So here's the morph. So once it comes fully on, let's just go ahead and animate a flicker from that point on. So just a steady flicker. And we're going to do that by uh, changing the opacity. So the opacity will just come go in and out. 
the color will stay the, cha uh, stay the same. Might change the ambient lighting as well. But let's focus on the cap uh, opacity right now. Opacity is going to go fully on and then back to where it was. And we'll stay there for just a little bit. And then we'll probably just cycle this. You could make an action out of it, but I think I'll, for this animation, I'm just going to cycle it. So then it goes back to there. And then maybe it goes a little dimmer. Maybe there. Take a look at that. Yeah, so the lighting dims out quite a bit. I like that. And then it'll come back on to that previous level. All right, and then we'll just cycle that. Okay, and so if the flicker is a little bit too much like lightning, then you can just change those dials. So you can see the flickers just maybe a little bit too much like lightning. So I'm just gonna moderate that a little bit. Go back to these bone layers. Um, can go back to the cycles that I made. I also did a cycle for the ambient lighting. So when the lighting goes up uh, uh, on the outsides of the skull, the ambient lighting goes down and then vice versa. And I also m might want it to be a little more intermittent. So we, we can pull, we select both these bones. Let's pull this over just a little bit so it flickers a couple times. It'll flicker and then stay, and then flicker and then stay. So I like that. Um, but let's just change how those are going to. So the ambient we can. Not too worried about the ambient, but this I, I think is a little bit dramatic, the contact lighting. So maybe we'll bring. here instead. See what that renders like. Right, so there's the dim. That comes back up. Preview. And then pretty light. Maybe I'll bring that down a little bit. So What if we go, because we do want it to be pretty subtle. So let's see how that looks. All right, and I'm gonna repeat the same process that I did for the lighting on the skull, and I'm gonna put some background lighting of the light sources, the torches. Create a new vector layer, recall torch lighting okay so actually since the torches are in the background I have to have them in their own bone layer to make a smart control for that lighting so I made a torch light bone layer I put the torch lighting inside it and now we can add a bone there. Let's just call it torchlight. We're going to do the same thing we did with the other shapes. I think I'm going to actually um, change the color as well. This will be a little bit more orangish or reddish in the background, I think. Okay, and another bone for the torch color. Call that torchlight color. And we'll make that a smart bone dial as well. Go ahead and select these shapes. So we have, or maybe orange and red. We'll start maybe my orange. And then at 100, that'll be more of a red. Okay, so now we have 
control bones for these uh, for these lighting layers, the, the torch lighting. Let's go ahead and add them to the animation. Of course, at frame zero, we want it to be all the way down. So we're at frame one. So we need it to be invisible at frame one. Um, and then when the morph occurs, let's zoom in a little bit here. So the morph starts here. So we're going to go to that torch layer, torch lighting layer. And let's go ahead and start animating there. The morph ends over here. That's when we will have our lighting all the way on. So torch lighting and then the opacity. I think let's just go up to 50%. I don't want to go all the way. And what does that look like? Pretty cool. So that's some background lighting. The lighting is showing up on the skull. And I think I'll get these, these lightings a little bit more centered. So if I go to the circles, we can go ahead and get them more centered around these torches. Like that. But of course, they're invisible all the way through the animation. Um, get to the end, the morph happens. This everything fades in. We can actually make the opacity a little bit less here and I think I'll do that. Want it to be kind of dim. A little bit better. You could do that. Maybe change it to a gradient effect. And I actually like the gradient effect better than the soft edge for this lighting. Check it out. So if I render this, look at that nice little fade. So just a bit of a glow in the background, and that's that's really what I'm going for. And I'm going to animate a little flicker on that as well. All right, let's animate the flicker. I'm just going to animate it at the same flicker that I did with the lighting on the face. All right, guys, if you like this video, give it a like, uh, comment, let me know what you liked about it, and let me or let me know what you want to see in the future. Uh, thanks for watching. Take care.